He randomly selects his victims, no preference of age or race. He would then torture and kill them before performing necrophilia on their dead body. This sadistic serial killer was also known as the Sex Beast. Let's unfold the case of Melvin Reese. Melvin attended the University of Maryland, he was very talented in music and he had a bright future ahead of him. But it was also because of his love for music he decided to drop out of university to further his music career working at a DC jazz club. Prior to his first murder, in 1955 he tried to kidnap a 36-year-old woman by forcing her into his car. Luckily, she managed to escape and ran away from him as fast as her legs would carry her. As she remembered what he looked like, Melvin was arrested, but the victim later refused to press charges against him, and he ultimately walked free. On the 26th of June 1957, Margaret Herald and her boyfriend, a US Army sergeant, decided to go on a trip near Annapolis, Maryland. As the couple was driving, Melvin, who was in a green vehicle, spotted them. He initially drove adjacent to them, then he proceeded to force them off the road. After successfully doing so, Melvin then got out of his car heading towards the couple's car. Melvin looked very intimidating as he was armed with a 38 caliber pistol. He motioned for them to roll down the window, demanding cigarettes and money from them. The two refused and without saying a single word, Melvin shot Margaret in the face. Her boyfriend quickly got out of the car and ran as fast as he could until he approached a farmhouse where he was able to call the police. When the police arrived at the crime scene, they found the lifeless body of Margaret. She was laying there naked and had been sexually assaulted. The police then searched the crime scene and around the area. They noticed there was an old building close by and their basement window were shattered. Inside the basement, they found the walls had been plastered with violent pornographic images and autopsy photos of female corpses. These women in the pictures could not be identified apart from one woman named Wanda Tipton. The police pursued with this lead and found that Wanda Tipton attended the University of Maryland and had graduated in 1945. The police were able to contact her and after giving her a description of their suspect, which was a tall, dark-haired man, she said she didn't know anyone who fit that description and without any further evidence, the case went cold. Melvin striked again on the 11th of January 1959. Carol Jackson, who was 29 years old, and his wife Mildred, who was 27, along with their two daughters, Susan, who was 5, and Jeanette, 18 months, had been visiting family in the Apple Grove area. After the visit around 9.40pm, the family of four headed back home, but they seemed to have disappeared without a trace, because that would be the last time anyone saw them alive. A relative who had also been visiting drove back home. On the way, they spotted Jackson's car on the road at 10pm. No one was in the car, which they found this to be weird. They called the police and there was no sign of an accident, struggle, and the car was in good working condition. Inside the car, the keys were still in the ignition. They also found Mildred's purse and some of the kids' toys were also left on the back seat. A search was started, but they couldn't find any new leads to suggest where the family might be. After Jackson's disappearance was made public, the police received a phone call from a local couple, Mr. and Mrs. Baldrops. They reported what had happened to them on the same afternoon as the family of four's disappearance. The couple said on the 11th of January 1959 at 7.30pm, they were forced to stop on the side of the road by a man driving a car. He was constantly flashing his lights, then cut them off so they had no choice but to stop. They then saw the man getting out of his car walking towards theirs. They immediately felt something was very wrong, so quickly put their car in reverse and sped away. The perpetrator they saw that night matches the description of the man who murdered Margaret Herald. The police were starting to think whether the crime were committed by the same offender. The search for the Jacksons family continued and around two months later on the 4th of March near Fredericksburg, two men were clearing bushes and to their horror they made a grim discovery. They found the body of Carol Jackson, he had been shot in the back of the head, hands had been tied behind his back and his body was face down, dumped on top of 18 months old baby Janet. It was later determined that Janet had been dumped alive in the ditch before her father and had suffocated under the weight of his body. Both of the bodies were in a state of decomposition and that would suggest that it had been there since the victims went missing. On the 21st of March 1959, two boys were out hunting in a forest near Annapolis. Then they stumbled upon a clump of hair behind a building. On further investigation, they realised it was a body, so immediately called the police. It was the body of Mildred and Susan Jackson. They were tortured with pre-mortem sexual assault. 
Mildred suffered from strangulation where Susan was bulging and her cause of death was due to a fractured skull. The police searched around the area and came across the same building as the one they did with the Margaret Herald murder. They went inside the basement and found a red button which matched the one that was missing from Mildred's dress. Because of this, they believed Melvin had brought his victims here. Just outside the building were fresh tyre marks which indicates the killer had been in the building not too long ago. These were crucial information because the evidence now suggests whoever killed Margaret Herod also killed the Jackson family. The case of the Jackson family made headline and $10,000 reward was offered for any information that can lead to the arrest of the murderer responsible for their death. The Frederick Burgs Police Department later received an anonymous letter saying they should investigate Melvin Rees in regards to the Jackson's case. The writer said he's friends with Melvin and they usually have conversation to talk philosophically about different subjects. The most recent conversation they had which was on the 10th of January 1959, which was the day before the Jacksons were abducted. The two talked about murder and whether it could ever be considered acceptable. Melvin said he felt murder was just part of human experience and that he wanted to try it out. He then said, you can't say it's wrong to kill, only individual standards make it right or wrong. Upon further investigation, they identified the writer as Glenn Musa, a friend of Melvin Reese. When Glenn Musa first heard about the disappearance of the Jackson family, he suspected Melvin. Eventually, when the bodies were found, he decided to confront Melvin with his suspicion, in which Melvin became very evasive. Melvin's nervous reaction confirmed his suspicion, so Glenn decided to anonymously notify the police. In the letter, he also suspected that Melvin had killed a woman named Margaret Harrod. The police decided to follow the lead and question Melvin only to find he had moved out of his house and nowhere to be seen. They searched all the jazz clubs which he regularly attended and asked around but no one has seen him. After conducting a background check on Melvin, they figured he attended the University of Maryland at the same time as Wanda Tipton and the two had dated. They then went to speak to Wanda and she eventually confessed that she had lied before about not knowing the man they described. She said they dated until Melvin got married. If she had told the truth, the Jackson family might have just escaped their death. A self-proclaimed psychic, Peter Hergos, got involved in the case. After visiting the Jackson family's grave in Falls Church, Virginia, and handled some of their possessions, he was able to describe how they were murdered and the way their bodies were placed after they were killed. Eventually, Glenn Musa received a call from Melvin. He said he was in West Memphis, Arkansas, working at a music store. With this information, Glenn immediately notified the police. The police found and arrested Melvin. Melvin was living with his girlfriend, Pat Barrington, who was an actress and dancer. She was also known to have starred in a movie, Orgy of the Dead. Nevertheless, the police then searched his home in Arkansas and found notebooks where Melvin had detailed what he had gruesomely done to the Jackson family. One such note stated, Drew to selected area and killed husband and baby. Now the mother and daughter were all mine. He then went on to describe what he had brutally done to Mildred Jackson. He then said, then tied and gagged, led her to a place of execution and hung her. I was her master. They also found a 38 caliber pistol and newspaper about Mildred Jackson. Evidence was starting to pile up. On further analysis, the police noticed the gun grips found at Mildred and Susan Jackson's crime scene matches the gun found at Melvin's house. As he struck the Jacksons, the gun grips came loose and this was a piece of crucial evidence to suggest Melvin had committed the crimes. Melvin also agreed to take a polygraph test, but unfortunately the results came back inconclusive. Melvin's case became a federal case because of the crimes crossing state lines. His trial started on the 25th of January 1961 and lasted for 35 days, with more than 100 witnesses called, of which one of the witnesses was US Army surgeon who witnessed his girlfriend Margaret Herald being shot. He was able to identify Melvin Reese as the killer. On the 28th of February 1961, Melvin Reese was convicted in Maryland for the murder of Margaret Herod and sentenced to life in prison. As for the murder of the Jackson family, Virginia gave him a death sentence, which in 1972 was later changed to life in prison because Melvin was found to be schizophrenic and was declared insane. Under the law of Virginia, if the person is declared insane, they cannot be executed. Melvin has also been associated with four counts of rapes around the University of Maryland. His victims were all teenagers, to include Mary Shomet, Michael Ryan, Mary Fellers and Shelby Fenable. In 1985, during Melvin's imprisonment, he had an interview with a reporter. He confessed to the murder of Shelby Fenables and Mary Fellers. However, he was not charged for either of the crimes and the case still remains open.
In 1995, Melvin Reese died of a heart attack in prison at the age of 67. Let me know what your thoughts are on this case and thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share this. Click here to watch another true crime case and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.